Monica, feel free to chime in. You you have a medical background, so just let me know if this sounds right. According to the hip, hip and knee joint replacement guidebook from Essentia Health, it says that this is for a knee replacement. Stay well hydrated and by drinking eight six to eight glasses of water per day before surgery. Rick can do that on his own. You need calcium to heal your bones and keep them strong. Vitamin D helps your body absorb calcium. You also need protein to build strength and improve healing before and after surgery. Fiber helps prevent or reduce constipation that can result from pain pills and less activity. So the big con concern here is the protein. Um, and Rick should have gotten protein, like extra protein rather than just his meal before. Before. Yeah. We didn't, I don't believe we got that booklet or got reviewed it or anything. I don't remember seeing it. Beforehand. Did you get sent that in the mail, like no, right from a center? I got that uh, right after I had uh, surgery. And you got that after you had surgery? On, on my left knee. I see. Okay. But this one's on my right knee. Sure. So that should have been, this right. should have prepared you for my right knee. more than anything i my first question as i'm listening is is was there not a pre-op physical completed because most of the time these orders should be along with them when they return from their pre-op physical therefore most of those orders should have been in place that way there is time to make arrangements for these things to be available Other than 
what the doctor prescribed? Only if it's been reviewed with the doctor. It has to go back to that same doctor to make sure that it is equivalent and okay with that physician. So you had a pre-op here. You don't have, you did not have a pre-op through ortho prior to your surgery. So you didn't meet with, I mean, you met with ortho, but not for the pre-op portion of it. That was here, for the provider here. Which basically states that you're okay on like a cardiac scan, respiratory scan, so to move forward. My question is, is was that appointment cleared with the actual orthopedic surgeon? Yep, all that information was sent to the orthopedic surgeon. Okay. Back to them to review prior to the surgery. And the orders from the surgeon came so yep. that they were able to be compared? Yep, they normally send us like a MPO, you know, held any medications in the morning, showering with the HIPAA cleanse, so those sorts of things is what we would receive from them prior to the surgery. Okay. So, at what point did the doctor approve of replacing the, as the chewable aspirin with a different kind and the liquid vitamin D with a different kind? Did, did you get all that approved by the doctor? And when? So, that would be a good question to talk to the provider about because she, there's no documentation on that part of it that I can see. Um, but most likely, she, you know, the same dosage for the oral and the liquid, she would have prescribed the oral. What's the, the reason dose. for changing it? Why not just give them the boost in the insurer? Um, I'm not exactly sure of the thinking on that, but I know that she did contact them and ask. I'm not sure what exactly happened there. Did you ever get documentation that they had the doctor change it? No. I mean, we need proof of that. It's just, you're just telling us that. There's a, like the, per, the provider here did a progress note, like in our charting system. What does that mean? So like she, when she called and talked to the doc, the orthopedic surgeon about it, she, when she got the answer, she did a documentation of a note in your medical record. How do we know that? I mean, you would need the doctor to say it. We need proof from the doc. Otherwise um, you could just, you could make, you could have made that up. Yeah. So we talked to him, he said it's okay to do this. Well, how do we know that? We could always go back and talk to the surgeon about it to see if he said it or not. Yeah, I'm yeah. not sure if she called or if she did it through like online if there's some sort of group online. You know what I mean? Like the yeah. we have like a portal they can talk through. I don't know if it was that or any yeah. interactions that we have with them. They on their end should be required to chart within their access system as well that this interaction happens and this is what the outcome was. When I talked to when I talked to him, he apologized that I didn't get what I was supposed to get. So that makes me think that he never mentioned that they had an agreement. And according to state guidelines, if there's going to be order changes, there still needs to be a signature on those orders. A, a simple documentation note is not sufficient. There has to be a, a signature. On the 31st, March 31st, he wrote this consultation record, and he put in here that Vitamin D, aspirin, and nutrition is being given appropriately, boost and insure. He thinks he's getting boost and insure on March 31st, according to this. That's what he thinks, but it's inaccurate, and he doesn't know that because he wasn't informed yet. This is from Dr. Van Syke. and the way he wrote it, it's as if he thinks you're getting it, he's, Rick's getting it appropriately, and then it says boost and insure on the side, but he wasn't getting it. That was March 31st? Yeah. Okay. So, I mean, it comes down to transparency. The client, in my opinion, should know everything that the doctor wants to happen. And that should be filled. You know, there's that memo that came out, I think, on the 23rd. Um, that you guys put, well, Kristen Gilpin put this out. And it says, uh, this is March 28th. MSOP Moose Lake Health Services has been going through a period of change in current processes to provide community care to clients of MSOP.
go directly to the client. It shouldn't be filtered through staff here because this is the kind of thing that keeps happening and this is just this one of many examples. It should go directly to the client and to you guys so that we can see what the doctor's saying because you're filtering out a lot of information and there's all this interaction between you guys and, and the hospital and then we don't know what's going on. A guy has to dig for his own records and that takes two or three weeks and by that time your health could change and you know I just think it should go directly to the client. You can avoid a lot of this. And it seems like there's secrets, there's stuff being hidden. You know. Yeah, I, I know for me I'm not trying to hide anything. I'm trying to be transparent but I get how you're and I do think that because weren't we trying to kind of send them copies of things that was a while ago. I'm not sure where that went because yeah it's important that you have copies of those things. Right. But if you guys were out they were right there saying that they're trying to make it like we're out in the community well we should be getting what the doctor ordered not not just calling behind the back and having it deducted or whatever because on uh, March 28th what was it I got the or March 27th seven days after surgery that's when I got my vitamin D I should have been getting vitamin D right that's on the 16th the day that I came back here it took them 11 days to get me any vitamin D so, and that I, was only because we had to report that, or we had to war, make a warning that we were going to report it to the Board of Nursing. I and then know, all of a sudden he gets vitamin D. I do like, know that when you came back, um, the provider reviewed it and wanted a vitamin D level drawn first, which I don't know how many days after that lab was drawn before she ordered anything. She wanted to see where you were at. I do know that. Right, that should have been done directly. And are those signed orders on file? Those, those orders have to be signed or it's not done. So that's, nothing being done here, like, you're, like what this is saying. We're, we're not getting the same medical, we're not getting provided the same medical as you do. If you went to the hospital, why is that? That's a question above our heads and unfortunately I was really hoping have some input, you know what I mean? Well, some of it's just—it's sort of common sense, and the guys have got complacent over the years and haven't really dug into some of this stuff. But it's horrible what's happening. I mean, it's, to me, a big problem is there's two big problems that I see: procedural problems, and one of them is this practice of not giving clients their documents straight from the hospital. Because then a guy doesn't know what's wrong with them. I just had a blood test done and essentially brings the blood back and they send, well they fax, what I've been told, they fax it up here, the results of that test. And then it gets filtered into a memo and I'm told it's interpreted by staff. As if I'm not smart enough to read the numbers myself. Um, that, that just leaves the door open for a lot of malpractice because if you look at it wrong or if you lie or you want to kill someone off, and let's not take that off the table. Um, we're a hated class of people. So that's a real concern. Um, that could be avoided if we just get the documents correctly. So, I'll definitely know. bring that forward later today to see where we're at with that. Because I know we were previously a couple years ago sending everything out, but I don't know. Like I said, I don't know what happened with that. Some of, some of these, these documents are directly from the day that I was released, I asked for a copy. You got a copy? And I got the okay. copy. So that's how I sure. came with uh, why I wasn't getting protein and the vitamin D and the chewable. You wouldn't have known otherwise unless you did yeah. the extra step of asking. Did you ask Accenture or him? I asked. I, I got it directly from, I had my doctor order me to get the copies. So I got these directly from Essentia. So I know what they had ordered because they said it went to right white drug that they that they ordered this stuff and I never received it right away. It was a page uh, or so it's like it's right here. This is I got this directly from the doctor. So I knew exactly what I was supposed to. 
to get and what I didn't get, what I didn't receive, I should say. Yeah. So I'm not, you know, I'm not asking for any more, anything more than what I deserve to, to get my health on track after surgery. I mean, that was painful. So I don't Definitely know it. Because somebody has to come up with an answer to all this problem, because it is a big problem here. Yeah. This, the second thing is, I hope you don't mind me going down now. Go a little bit of a off road, but sort of the second procedural issue that I keep running into is when a guy fills out a medical fire request, they don't get a carbon copy. They're expected to just put the whole thing in the box. It's different than client requests where you get a carbon copy right there at the desk. There's a witness that signs that you are asking for something and you get a carbon copy of that. The witness is at the staff desk and then you put it in the box. So if it disappears, you can at least show the pink copy and say, I did my part. I'm trying to reach out for help, whatever. Um, if you don't get that with medical, you just put the whole thing in the medical box. That could be thrown away. I've had. I've had some, I have had some come up missing, and then even if they don't come up missing, it'll be six months before I hear from medical. Like, it's a long time. Do you live on one fee as well? Yeah. Because I've been the primary nurse since March, and I haven't had, I haven't heard of a problem yet of, like, not getting, like, no one came up to me and said, oh, you haven't answered my request. Well, there's, a, like I said, there's a ton of hopelessness you can place in, and sure. not that that's an excuse, but yeah. the guys just, they just put up with it. They just deal with their medical issues by themselves on their own. The point is, it's, it's based on the honor system. It's, there's no rights. I, I just put in the thing, and I just hope you guys don't throw it away and ignore it. Yeah. And then I just hope you care enough. I mean, that's not the way the system operates. Do you keep that pink copy on the bottom? No. No? You don't get anything. You So when you put in a medical request, you're supposed to, you know, write so whatever you want, and then you take the pink copy and you keep that. Even if I do that, there's nobody that witnesses that I, get I that part turn it in. Yeah. I get so that we need someone at the staff to sign off, but it just it should be exactly like my request. And once in a while, I'll be able to get a staff to do it, but it's after a lot of argument, and i got to push them, and I explain it to them, and they, they don't get it right away. I don't know why it's not obvious, but I've gotten it done twice out of the ten times. That's just because I'm persistent, but... Most guys are just going to say, okay, no problem. Um, and then it can end up missing or whatever, and then you don't get any medical care. I just don't, I, that just seems real shady that there's no paper trail. Yeah, I guess I'm going to talk about this stuff now. Okay. 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 All right, this is uh, a response from the dietitian yeah. on uh, 34 or 324. And she's saying that my regular meals provide an average of 100 grams of protein per day, with, which is already exceeded high in protein. We don't get that. We don't get no hunt. We do not get 100 grams of protein at every meal or, or through the three meals. Through the whole day, you do, I bet you we don't even get 30 grams of protein. That's that's why I needed the shakes to help because it'll help my muscles because I was cramping up and stuff now. And I needed that protein to help my muscles get in shape. And, and this is a dietitian answering a medical question. Well, you did you write it to her or no? He, he did, but he, she should have wrote, wrote it to, to her somebody then, who yeah. is responsible for that. She, she is you know, a dietitian should know the macros, you know, the protein and whatnot. Well, you're just blatantly admitting that he didn't get what he was supposed to get and it was replaced, Yeah. you know, with peanut butter, you know. And it, it might seem petty, but this isn't a practice you keep doing because if you have the power to do that with something, you can do it with a serious drug or with anything else. Nurse practitioners should not be overriding doctors. Unless, like Monica said, you have a signature from the doctor. But that's not overriding. That's going back to the doctor to get further guidance. That's fine, you know. But it doesn't look like that's what happened. And now the knee's not healing right. That's the whole point of this whole thing. See, I, the 
muscles, my calf muscles and my thigh muscles. I need it. I still need that protein. And I'm not getting it. I'm not getting any. I'm not getting no 100 grams of protein a day. There's no way. Are you, you're not getting the diabetic? I'm not getting not any of it. Protein fat, sorry. I'm not getting any of it. I never, I never did receive it. I'm like, Bennett said I was supposed to get uh, the diabetic bags for seven days. I mean, you're going to give me an egg, a hard boiled egg. That's going to give me, what, six grams of protein in that. I mean, this makes no sense on how to. A person's supposed to heal after such a violent uh, surgery, and it's like you know I'm not complaining. I just want what I was supposed to get, yeah, so I can heal. I will definitely bring everything forward to the supervisor and the provider, everyone um, about your concerns. I'm really hoping that she'll be able to join. She probably has more stuff than us. Apologize for that. Mom, do you have any statements you want to make before we close them? Yeah, even after this care conference, what type of communication is this inmate or, sorry, this fellow in this treatment facility, because there is a difference, going to be receiving as far as communication letting him know what is come about? Because we can pass the buck all day long, but if he doesn't get any response, it does him no good. Yeah, no, I get what you're saying completely. I plan to talk. I'm not sure if I'll be able to get a response today, but I will do my best. And I can either meet with you or send you a memo kind of outlining what I get to gather back. Right. That's not okay. I would, I would prefer to get something to keep helping me here. It's like these, these diabetic bags, are, those are for people with diabetes. And if there's further concerns as far as healing goes, then it should be forwarded to the doctor that those concerns are still in place so that the doctor can address those issues instead of nursing just thinking that they can volley that and ignore or choose to address if they want. It actually should be forwarded to the physician because he is post-operative. Yeah. Did you, have you met recently with the provider here for any sort of follow-up, you know? No. No. For the surgeon? You met with the I, surgeon, I met with right? the surgeon and said, I'm my scars healing nicely, but lately I've been having my calf muscles not, and I've been my thigh. And I, I've been working on it. To, I've been going to physical therapy and stuff, but I still need that. You need that protein for your, your, your muscles. Or something else, because maybe if it's not healing properly, there might be something else deficient. Therefore, it may warrant another visit. You're welcome.